far off. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them, but a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire. And he earnestly and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him, being Jesus. And Peter denied him, saying, Woman, I don't know him. And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. In about the space of one hour, another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I do not know what you say. And immediately while he spake, the cock crowed. You may be seated. I say that because my title is here. I'll, I'll lose you to this stuff. With the help of God, I want to preach. Your destiny is determined by your decisions and not your circumstances. All right, all right. Your destiny is determined by your decisions and not your circumstances. We, a lot of people, they blame their situation as being why they do what they do. A lot of times, husband and wives actually be fighting. And the man will say to the woman, you made me hit you. Or you made me cuss you out. You're making a famous statement of somebody I know is you're making me mad. We can't do those things. We have not the power. We do the things that we do by choice. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The devil doesn't even have the power. Do you know that? The devil can't make you do anything. Amen. Amen. Anything that you do, it is by your choice. Mm -hmm. There is one thing that God has given to man that is given to no other creature. That is the ability to choose. Now, Peter was a brass young man. He spoke over his mouth things he didn't even know completely about the whole thing. But the Bible tells me there was a time that they were in the boat and Jesus came walking along the sea. <clears throat> and Peter said, Lord, if it is you, bid me to come on the water. And Jesus said to Peter, come. It was Peter's decision to ask. It was Peter's decision to reach his leg over the boat. And Peter began to walk on the water. But as Peter was walking on the water, circumstances changed. Wow, wow. Before Peter got on the water, the water was calm. Before Peter got on the water, there was no problem. The wind was not blowing. Everything was good at the time that Peter got out on the water. But as Peter began to get and go to Jesus, circumstances change. Yes, and when the circumstances change, Peter looked at the circumstances instead of the decision he had made. Wow, wow. Too many of us will blame living for God that are not living for God on our circumstances. We'll tell about this situation and we'll break up that situation and we'll tell about this and that and why we can't do what we know we need to do for right. God because of other folks. Right. All right. Well, Corey made me do it. <laughs> well, I didn't come to church because of something Harold said to me. I couldn't do this because of what Joe did to me. And so we, 
We blame our circumstances on why we don't do the will of God. All right, all right. We'll blame everything but our own decision. Wow, wow. Because when the circumstances came up, Peter had a decision to make. He could keep on walking on the water, or he could look at a circumstance. A lot of folks that are living for God, as soon as negative circumstances happen, they make negative decisions. Instead of looking at God and trusting God for their decisions, they allow their decisions to be molded by their situation. Wow, wow. We're going to pay our tithes, but a bill came in we didn't know about. Hmm. And we let that circumstance make us make a decision that we would have made right. Your destiny is decided by your decisions and not by your circumstances. Wow, wow. Your place, your level, your position in God is determined by the decisions you make and not by situations you are involved in. Now Peter finds out the wind is blowing. His circumstances have changed. His situation has changed. Now water's lapping at his feet. And in the midst of that, he took his eyes off of Jesus. When you look at your circumstances, instead of looking at God, you'll lose focus. When you focus on your situation and your circumstances, you'll be overwhelmed by decision making. Amen. You'll be trying to figure out what do I do instead of who do I turn to. You'll look at what's going on around you. You'll look at your problems instead of the God of your problems. Amen. And when Peter took his eyes off of Jesus, he began to sing. But, 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 but in the midst of the wrong decision, he made a right decision because he called on God. Amen. There comes a time, children, that you can't look at circumstances when you make your decision. You got to know that you know that you know. My dependency is all on God. Now we find Peter in the garden with Jesus. The soldiers have come to take the master away. And because of the circumstances, Peter decides to pull a sword out. And with that decision, he chops off a man's ear. And Jesus said, put up the sword, Peter. It's the wrong decision. Wow, wow. Because you only did it because of your circumstance. Mm -hmm. And now they take Jesus to Pilate to judge. And all the disciples run away. But Peter's sitting there, and as he's sitting there by the fire, a woman looks at him and says, aren't you with Jesus too? And Peter began to look at a situation. Wow, wow. They're taking folks to jail that know Jesus. They got Jesus over there and beating on him and cussing at him. And so Peter, instead of making a proper decision based on his relationship, he made a decision based on his circumstances. Say that, say that. And Peter said, no, I don't know him. Wow, wow. And while he was sitting there, he could have been longer, ain't God good? Because yeah. mm -hmm. when you mess up, he brings your test around again. All right. And some a man was a woman, now it's a man, saying, sure, you have to be with him. And Peter again looked at his situation, and he thought that his destiny would be 
controlled by his situation that if I say I know Jesus, they might arrest me too. Wow. So Peter was looking at his destiny based on his circumstances. That if I say this, I might end up just like Jesus. So his decision was, I don't know him. Wow, wow. How is it, church, that when we are in the wrong circumstances, we don't know him? Why is it that when we are around certain friends, we don't know Jesus? Wow. Why is it when we are around family members, because the circumstances is not conducive for us to talk about God, we don't know him? Why is it we don't have time for Jesus when company comes to town? Why is it, oh, when the boss is in, we all goody two shoe and, and don't talk about God and he's not on our lips because our circumstances wow. ain't right. Wow. Wow. Oh, but your destiny and the company is not based on your circumstance, but it is based on your relationship and the decisions you make with God. Yes. Oh, if you want Amen. to win friends and influence people, it won't be because of your circumstance. But it will be because of your decisions you made with God. Because only God can bring you in front of people and give you a relationship that's going to last. Now we find Peter sitting on the side and somebody said you must know him because you are a Galilean. Wow. But the Bible says that Peter denied the Lord again because of his circumstances. And when he denied the Lord his destiny, made him cry and leave the scene. All right. His destiny, oh, was influenced by his circumstances. Instead of letting his destiny being influenced or determined by his decision. If Peter would have made the right decision towards God, Jesus would not have looked at him and shook his head. But Peter allowed circumstances to make decisions just like some of us. The bill collector will call and catch us off guard because we got all the rest of them we got them blocked. <laughs> but they call in on a number we don't know. And hello, me speak no English. <laughs> oh, we say things because of our circumstances. Oh, somebody has thrown something at you and you're not paying attention and they kept you off guard. And before you know it, a lie came out of your lips, just, just slipped off the hip and came out of the lips. Just like that. And because of our circumstances, somebody will ask us a question or, or say something. And because we get nervous, got nervous, something else came out because of the circumstances. But I'm saying your destiny is not determined by your circumstances. But it is by the decisions that you make. Amen, amen. And now Peter finds himself outside of Christ because of the circumstances. Yes, yes. But I want you to know that when Peter got right with God, he began to make the right decisions. Yes. In spite of his circumstances. Because now, when the day of Pentecost came, it was Peter that stood up and made the right decision because he was fulfilling his destiny. Amen. God already told Peter, Peter, your name is called Petra, meaning a stone. And upon this rock, I will build my church. Amen. And the gates of hell should not prevail. Not on Peter was he building his church because Peter fell. Not on Peter was he going to build his church, but on the revelation of who he is. I'm going to build my church, but Peter, I'm going to use you as the spokesman. Why? Because I know you're going to make the right decisions. And when all those people were around, when he denied Jesus in front of three, he stood up on the day of Pentecost and he said, you men of Judah and Judea, hearken unto me. 
For these men are not drunk as you suppose, but it is the third hour of the day, or nine o'clock in the morning. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, that in the last day, says God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. I want you to know that Peter had a destiny that he made by making the right decision. He stood up on the day of Pentecost and brought the world the message of salvation. He didn't worry about who was there. He didn't worry about the policemen. He didn't worry about those that might take him to jail. He stood up and said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, because this is the decision that will determine your destiny. Amen. decision because of his destiny. Knowing that he knows who Jesus is, he said, look at here, boys. When you crucify me, crucify me upside down. I don't, I'm not worthy to be crucified like the Lord. He wasn't doing it based on his circumstances. He accepted that he was going to die. But he made a decision about his destiny. That I'm going in to be with the Lord, but I want to show the world that I ain't worthy. Hang me upside down. And I don't know about you, but there was a man named Lot who looked at his situation when his father Abraham said, we can't dwell together. Go to where you want to go. And the Bible said he based his move on his circumstances. He based and moved to the plains of Sodom. While he was in the plains of Sodom, his whole family got kidnapped, and Abraham went after them and brought them back. But because of his circumstances, he moved from the plains into the city. Don't let your situation drive you from where you ought to be. Don't let things that happen in your life block your progress in God. Don't let situations that you're in cause you to make bad moves that's going to affect your future. Because as he was in the city and the wickedness of the city, his daughters end up marrying sodomites because of the decision he made because of his circumstances. And then God decided that it was going to destroy the city and he came to get locked. But because of the decisions that Lot made through his circumstance, he couldn't even win his own family to come out with him. All because the decisions he made were not for his destiny, but for his destruction. Wow. And now when Lot is coming out, and his wife is coming out, and his two daughters are coming out, his wife looked at her circumstances and decided to make a decision that I need to look back at what I lost. Anytime you put your hand to the plow, looking back at what you lost, you're not even fit. The Bible says for the kingdom. Well, and she well. tied into a pillar of salt because her destiny was not determined by her decision. She could it should have been determined by her decision to get out, but instead she allowed her circumstances of loss to turn her around. I want you to know, child of God, if you're going to be somebody in God, it is something you gotta make up in your mind and be determined and make the right decisions out for God. Jonah went down to Nineveh. 
Jonah bought a ticket and went down into the belly of the ship. Jonah got swallowed by a fish and went down into the belly of the fish. And, uh, my boy Jonah's destiny was to go down because he based it on his circumstances instead of on the God that he served. But when he made up his mind and made the right decision on his destiny was to go preach to Nineveh, the Bible said that the whale, the fish, spit, ain't no whale that said the fish, the fish spit Jonah up out and Jonah found himself in the midst of the city. But wait a minute, he, Jonah, Jonah preached to the city like God asked him, but Jonah still had non-repentance in his heart because he got upset at God because he said, didn't I tell you that when these people would repent, you would forgive them their sins. And God said, do you have a right to be angry? So Jonah sat down, and then the Bible says God caused a plant, a gird, to grow up over Jonah. And it gave him shade for the beating sun because he wanted to know what was God going to do about that situation. And while he said that, God already had a worm that was going to come up and eat the plant and then cause the east wind and the sun to beat down on Jonah's head. And Jonah got angry. And God said, why are you angry at the plant? Because it's dead. You didn't even cause it to live or to die or to grow. And you can't be sorrowful over a city where the 60,000 people that don't know the right hand from the left and much the city and much count. The decision that Jonah made and was mad at was based on the circumstances of things that happened in his past. Wait a minute now. Don't let your past block your future. We will let things that happened to us by somebody else 10 years ago make us make wrong decisions. Instead of having a decision for our destiny of forgiveness, we'll be mad about something that someone said that someone said they said about someone we know. Instead of us forgiving and moving on, we allow that to block. Don't you know there are some folks that die with anger in their lives? Die with being mad at folks? And the folks that they're mad at ain't even paying attention to them. And that makes you mad. And it's like, Somebody borrow money from you, and then you know they got paid, and they don't talk to you, they don't say nothing, they don't mention the money, and they walk on by you like they don't know. Uh -huh. oh, I don't owe you nothing. Uh -huh. Now you're going to in front of me. I think oh, okay. but and you know they know, but they don't even mention, it, and you just be mad. And then they have the nerve. Can I borrow ten dollars? <laughs> and you allow that to eat at you. And you go on praising God, thinking, thinking everything well, but your circumstances is going to affect the decisions you make. Yeah. Because you based it on circumstances yeah. instead of your destiny. And your decisions are determined. Listen, mm -hmm. if you're going to get to heaven it's because you made the right decision, you accepted Jesus. Mm -hmm. If you're going to get free from sins because you make the right decision, don't mm -hmm. worry about the circumstances you're in. Make the right decision to get out. Our decisions are based not on our circumstances, but by knowing what destiny that God has for you and me. I don't know about you this morning, but I want to make the right decisions because I know the destiny that God has for me. Amen. Amen. I could get upset about many things in life, but it's not good for my destiny or where I'm trying to go. I could be angry about a lot of things in life, but if I allow my anger or my situation or my circumstances to dictate the way I judge things, it's going to cause me to make the wrong decisions in life. All of us can testify to decisions we made that were wrong. Baby, you shouldn't buy that. Baby, I wouldn't buy that. You know, we really don't have money at all. We'd we be all right. We'd be all right. And then somebody go out and spend money. And then we broke. And then a bill comes. The light bill get clicked off. But we only made the right decisions instead of getting the circumstances in the moment. Y'all know how we do things in the spirit, in the spirit of the moment? Maybe y'all don't. But I know I do. Then I go out and say, man, why did I do that? Why did I make that decision? 
Oh, many times I, I beat myself up because of decisions that I made. I told God I'm going to make sure my credit stays good. I'm going to pay everything else off that I walk away with. Stuff from my past, I've been sending money in. Clear up past, why? Because now when I try to get something, people say, well, what, don't you owe this count over here? And I owe oh, I figure out because it's been going on for 10 years and it get written off. But it don't work that way all the time. Amen. So I want to make the right decisions so that my destiny will be on line with the vision of God. Amen. This morning, this church needs to make decisions based on this destiny. Don't come to church because mama came to church and daddy oh, came to church. My cousins come to church. This is what we do all Sunday. Come to church because of the decision you made to not forsake the house of God. Amen. Worship God because your destiny is to be in his presence. Amen, amen. Don't let circumstances drive you from the house of God. Most people get negative circumstances and they run from the church instead of running to the church. Think how many people have things that go bad in their life. The first thing they do, they get away from God instead of drawing near. They're not praying no more. They're not reading no more. They're not fasting no more. They're not studying the word of God no more. They're, they're, if you took the temperature, it would be below zero. Let your destiny be controlled by your decisions Amen. and not your circumstances. Again, we want to remind everybody that it is our decision and our destiny to build a house for the living God. It has to be in your heart. It has to be in your mind that you want to do a work for God. Because if you base that on your relationship God. You'll be here come hell or high water. Yeah. You'll be here if three people are here. Why? Because you're not basing it on the amount of people here. Amen. You're basing Amen. it on the way you live for God. Yeah. So let us remember your destiny is determined by your decisions and not by your circumstances. Don't let your circumstances rule your life. Don't let your problems, your situations, your conditions dictate how you live for God. Base that on your relationship with Jesus Christ. Because I am convinced that the one who brought me this far is able to keep me until that day. Yes. The one who brought me out of God just can carry me into his marvelous life. Yes. And know that Peter, he walked back on the water with Man. Jesus. Let us stand. Still in the business of building lives. God is into renewing, rebuilding, and restoring brokenness in our lives. Let Jesus fix the brokenness in your life. The sister was saying that she believes God is calling us to draw nigh. The Bible says, In the day that you seek me with all your heart, that will be the day I'll be found. Only what's done for Christ is going to last you. New houses, new cars, new land, new jobs, new this, new that, another, a new and some more. When it's all said and done, none of that will get us to heaven but a relation with Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. I've been working on my little house since we moved in. Ain't got it fixed yet. And I'm still working. But there's another house I cannot neglect. Amen, amen. In the midst of working on my physical house, I have a spiritual house made without hands. Amen. And I got to keep on working yes. on it yes. because amen. Jesus is still working on me. Amen. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling and present your fathers before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior, that be glory and honor, dominion and power, both now and forever, that the church name. Amen. 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 Amen.